Welcome viewers, this is Winch here, here to talk about the new dawn of gaming coming at the end of this year, holiday season 2013, after seven years, finally, the next generation console is here. The question I want to ask you in this video, and uh, I'm not starting console wars here, but is this the beginning of the end of the big desktop PC games, that, uh, gaming hardware setups that we've seen here in the past? kind of dominating uh, the console gaming here in the last uh, couple of years as the hardware has been aging. But ask yourself, do you want to continue to play on the platform that really only has one type of user interface, the antiquated keyboard and mouse that we've seen for decades? Or do you want to play with something that's incredibly ergonomic, revolutionary, has multi-dimensional movement capabilities, joysticks, vibration, uh, LCD screens. I mean, this looks pretty cool to me. I mean, this is this looks like the future of gaming right here, guys. Um, and here, it's always been an argument with console platforms. Do they do they have the hardware capability to offer compatible type of PC gaming visuals? Well, in the last few years, we've been seeing uh, the answer to that question. It's no. Games like Battlefield 3, Crisis 3, I just picked up Crisis 3 uh, yesterday, and I bought it for PC. I have both the PC and a console, and I played both demos, and uh, there's no question it was much better on PC. So much, in fact, that I've, I've steered away from console. Battlefield 3, you know, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, I've played both. I don't see a huge discrepancy between the two gameplays. There's some frame rate issues here and there, but whenever I play it on console, I don't say to myself, man, this is just so bad compared to PC. It's really not that bad. Uh, but now look at these visuals. This is from Killzone. This is, of course, in the new uh, live stream announcement that they had, and I encourage you to watch. Don't if you, did, if you did see the live stream, it was pretty bad in terms of the upload capabilities. And bear in mind, you're watching this on YouTube, guys. So what you're seeing here is the limitations of YouTube, which limits uploads to 30 frames a second. Uh, you're limited your buffer speed, your upload, whatever I upload this file at. So bear that in mind that you're not even seeing what this game really is going to look like when it's sitting on front of you at, on your 60-inch TV and your nice big TV uh, as you're sitting back in your gaming chair enjoying the comforts and this, enjoying this beautiful eye candy. And as I walk through this video, I'm going to stop this down, which is a little bit different. I, as you saw there, I stopped the segment, put some stills in here, I even slowed down some, some portions of uh, the gameplay because there is some epic footage, and I hate that word, I hate to say that word because it's so overused nowadays, it's epic everything, you see it on IHOP commercials for God's sakes, epic waffles at IHOP, anyway, so I'm trying to steer away from that damn word because it's driving me nuts, so I apologize for saying that, that was a slip, but look at this footage, uh, now they didn't get too in depth on the technical specs of the PlayStation 4. I would suspect that's because they know, basically, you know how Xbox and Microsoft rolls. They wait for their competitor to make the first move, then they will basically mimic or copy whatever they're doing and claim it as their own. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. And I suspect that's why they've kind of been uh, obscure a little bit on the exact technical details. But let me pause this frame. Check this out, and I'm gonna put this in slow motion. Is this cinematic quality uh, footage that we are observing here? Yes, it is, guys. Uh, and this is revolutionary. Um, now, again, I'm not trying to bash on PC gameplay. Uh, I, I, I'm a console fanboy now. But let me tell you guys, I was at the very beginning of PC gameplay when it was in its infancy. I've been playing PC games. Um, and I remember as a kid saying to myself, whenever I played a game like, I don't know, Mech Warrior or something, and you see that this awesome cinematic CGI intro, and you say to yourself, wow, I wish the actual gameplay would be just like that. And, and I was kind of surprised here, let me take a moment here, they, got, they actually used such a violent footage here in this post-violent uh, era type gameplay here to introduce the game. So I was a little kind of like, uh, you guys might want to tread car carefully on the PR side of this. Um, but... As a kid, I was saying, why can't I have that CGI type experience in my actual gameplay? Well, obviously, the technical constraints at the time period would restrict that. But there it is. We go from CGI to live gameplay seamlessly. And it looks just the same. And this, to me, personally, when I saw this, I said to myself, it's finally arrived. This is what I've been looking for all my gaming life was... An experience like this where I could play just like I, I wanted to in terms of seeing the, the actual animations and 
Of course, if you guys watched the live stream, you saw some of the capabilities of this hardware, this gaming hardware. It had truly lifelike animations in terms of facial expressions, eye movements. Uh, it, it, the, the programming and, and the, uh, the amount of depth involved in creating something like that, it's almost lifelike, I have to say. It, is kind, it kind of is scary in some respects. And I kind of wonder if, if we're going to get to a point in gaming where it's a little too realistic. Where you're shooting people and you're seeing blood and animations and, and facial expressions that are genuinely lifelike. And of course, we all know in the news lately about the, the flack uh, video games are taking for violence. And, I mean, this is more fuel to fire because it's uh, there's obviously no sign of any holding back soon. Of course, I'm not a big believer in, in all this hoopla that violent video games lead to... Uh, violent acts in real life but there is evidence to support that they do given certain circumstances and i'm not here to talk about that however what we are here to talk about is the hardware capability and the graphics again i really like this moment in this this clip and i questioned who was actually doing this footage because he seemed kind of newbie to me i don't know about your guys's uh, take on it, but it seemed like his accuracy was a little bit subpar, but he knives this guy as he leaps down and then he quickly throws the same knife into the guy to his right, but he misses. But I thought it was really cool that he could do that and throw that knife and it would have been even more epic if he actually got that guy. Uh, but unfortunately he didn't, but again this guy's aim didn't seem quite on par. But the visuals and the hardware capability, again, it's it seems to me like we've finally gotten there with consoles and, and this is the point I'm trying to get at is for $400, which seems to be the consensus of what the system's going to run, $400, you have the capability of running what used to be a supercomputer type potential just a few years ago. Um, and, th and that's the argument I want to get to as well, is this PC gamers always harp on how superior their hardware is. There's no question. I'm not going to argue with that, with that. But ask yourself, what developer out there is going to make a game for you to utilize your $1,000 GPU uh, processor that you have in your beast computer and is going to run that game and, and utilize all that power? It's just wasted power is all it is. So what, what you are at the mercy of with these guys that have these super four and $5,000 computers out there, they're at the mercy of the developers. Their, their, their system is only good as a game that can support it. And, What's going on here with PlayStation 4 is that literally every single developer in the world is on board with this. Even Blizzard Entertainment came out, which was kind of strange to me, and announced that they'll be supporting Diablo 3 with this and the PlayStation 3. But you're seeing com what traditionally was computer-geared developers going to console. Now, the reason for that is, simply, guys, it's where the money's at, and it's where people are going. You're not seeing in the average household somebody running around with a $5,000 computer. It's a very small niche market, and unfortunately, you're just not going to have a game that's going to be able to run on that type of setup, because it wouldn't run on anything else. So why would you go through the, the amount of time to develop a game that just for that type of market? It's not going to happen. What is going to happen is you're going to see units like this in everybody's home, and you're seeing a fundamental change in the in the direction that PlayStation's taking its business, and that being incorporating social networking, incorporating uh, the network uh, amongst your peers, your friends, the community, listening to the community, and you're also seeing a huge change, and that being incorporating on-the-go gaming with your home experience. How many times do you sit at work in your office job, hunched over your keyboard and mouse? thinking, man, oh, I can't wait to get this load out for Battlefield 3. I'm thinking about when I get home or uh, I got this tactic. I got this idea of what I want to do in this game. Or uh, do you think about a puzzle or solution? Well, you know, now when the boss isn't looking, you can pull out your PlayStation Vita and uh, continue your game experience or maybe tailor a loadout, issue a challenge to a friend, send a message to a friend. Revolutionary. Again, not to harp on PC game, but but you're not going to be able to do that with, with the old style mentality of gaming. This is the future. Incorporating your friends, working together with your friends, having multi-dynamic functionality across many platforms that are all interconnected. Again, we may not be seeing groundbreaking uh, graphics changes, which again, I'm not arguing the graphics are incredible, but we are seeing a fundamental shift in the way that gaming platforms are offered and experienced throughout the gaming community and that's to me uh that is warranted for a new type of console that's revolutionary now this game you're checking out i really liked this 
Uh, I always like driving games, simulator type games, uh, but Drive Club. This game is painstakingly animated and rendered down to the carbon fiber weaves, the lenses in the in the uh, headlights of the car. If you wax them, the rainbow type flare you get in that. Every little minor detail of a car, you are driving a vehicle from a first person perspective. The sounds, check out the visuals. That's always one thing I play in history in the games is, a, is, is the visuals on the side of the road. And I'll keep that in my commentary down just so you can just listen to this because the sound is such a big part of these vehicles. Here you are issuing a challenge to an, a friend across the world. Great Britain. Let's hang out, buddy. Sony tablet. Check that out. Check out Issue a Challenge. Moving on, if, if you're not impressed now, I don't know what you will be, but let's take it to another level. Halo, what? Yes, right, guys. The developers of Bungie traditionally only catered to Xbox, and they're coming out with a game called Destiny, first-person shooter, and to me it looks like an art form and a first-person shooter combined because the visuals in this game, from what I saw, are astonishing. I've never seen anything like it. Clearly mindset on experiencing more than just a shooter but an entire what they're calling a worldwide shooter not an mmo or first person shooter this is a worldwide shooter that to me sounds like something we've never seen before again multi-dimensional gaming multi-platformed uh and not just you're just not going to see this type of exclusive catering to one console type development with developers. Now, you know, maybe on some games you will, but the fact that you're seeing Bungie come from what was traditionally just Xbox to PlayStation, I would never in a million years imagine this. But this looks impressive to me. And we have very little to see, but again, PlayStation 4 is capable of running the hardware. Obviously, it's going to be in 1080p or greater. The, just, the hardware capabilities of this system will be undeniably one of the best out there. Um, now, as we wrap up this video again, uh, I want to touch a little more on that PlayStation Vita. Don't run out right now and say, I got to get me a PlayStation Vita. Because they're saying the PlayStation Vita, you'll be able to play PlayStation 4 games on the Vita. I'm a little skeptical of that. I've had a Vita. I love my Vita. Don't get me wrong. But it, hell, it took them, I don't know, six, seven, maybe nine months just to get PS1 classics on the Vita. You still can't play PlayStation 2 games on the Vita. Hell, you can't even play PlayStation 3 games on the Vita, which is just beyond me considering it has twice the, the computing processor capability of an iPad 2 and four times the memory capacity of a PlayStation 3. So why is it, it's been a big failure in, in, the, in those eyes, if you ask me, in terms of that lack of capability right now. Now they're saying, I'm glad that they are pl planning on utilizing this device and, and uh, not giving up on it because there's lots of potential, but the price point's been so high, just not many people have gone out and bought the thing because they don't want to pay $400 for a unit or $300 for a unit that really doesn't have a ton of games. It doesn't have that functionality. I mean, I should be able to play any PlayStation 3 game on this unit. So with that being said, I'm really excited about what they're bringing with the PlayStation 4. I'm not excited about the social media networking, though. It's not all sunshine and roses for me. I don't need to see Facebook integrated with my gaming experience. I'm sorry. I don't see the revel rev the relevancy of that whatsoever. Um, but networking with your friends is, is great. I want to see VoIP. Of course, there's an instant share function now that you can stream gameplay right into your experience. 
Um, and I showed that just briefly there. I kind of skipped over that. Uh, but you can stream your gameplay. Uh, we'll see how that works. I'm not not like a comment on that too much. I'll just say right now, there's a lot of editing that goes into my footage right now. So just uploading raw footage onto the internet that you, off your, if you remember, hit the share button during that quote epic moment. Uh, what well, you know, I don't know if how that's really going to work out. If it's going to be what they're intending it to be, but the fact that they're offering it, that's a good. It's a step forward. I'll say that. Um, again, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation Four, it's all going to be integrated. This is the wave of the future. I'm not saying PC's dead forever, but for the mainstream public and the developers out there, we're seeing a change. We're seeing what people want, and this is what people want. And this is the future of gaming, guys. So please like and subscribe to the video if you enjoy the content. Obviously, I plan on getting a PlayStation 4, and obviously I'll continue bringing you quality content on all platforms. Thanks for watching.